starring June Lockhart, Hugh Riley, John Provost as Timmy, and, of course, Lassie. Describe the Grand Canyon. You're so right. It has no equal and no superior. Why, you can say that again. I found this represents all things to all people. It looks bigger than the whole world. It's the greatest visual shock known to man. Oh, oh Lassie, careful. We don't want to lose you. <laughs> Hmm? Do you think anybody has ever fallen over? Well, now, Timmy... <laughs> I see this is your first trip to the canyon. Well, you surely would have heard about Total Loss Watkins. It's my first trip, but Mom's been here before. Who's lost Total? No, dear. Total Loss. It seems that Total Loss Watkins went over the rim one day. Oh, no! Yes, but fortunately he was wearing rubber boots. He managed to light on his feet. They say he bounced up and down for two days and two nights. <laughs> and then his friends finally had to shoot him to keep him from starving to death. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, is that a tall one. Well, that's the first of many you're going to hear. It's a big canyon filled with big stories. Well, I guess we better be on our way. I have to get to my appointment at park headquarters. Sir, maybe we'll see each other again. Bye, son. Maybe we will. That's a fine dog, Timmy. She's been a real sport about wearing her leash. Well, she didn't like it at first. I think it sort of embarrassed her. But Lassie and I, we're real glad we get to stay together at the hotel. You see, Lassie and I, we're never apart. Timmy's a lot like you, Ruth. I've known your mother since she was just about your age. Oh, those happy years at Yellowstone. Yes, I've missed them. And the old man. That old mountain goat. Your grandpa taught me all I know. Oh, go on now, Oliver. You'd have been a park superintendent with or without Dad's help. Well, anyway, it's good to have you back in the park service. Well, now, I'm not back permanently. Goodness, Paul would never stand still for that. But he's just as enthusiastic as I am about this See America First program. Dad says there's a big need for more to... No, Timmy. Moral and spiritual inspiration. Paul's right. And the source is right here. If I know your mother, she's going to do a bang-up job promoting this program. Thank you. Oh, you know, I'd forgotten how lovely the canyon is. Listen to that recording. It's just beautiful. If I'm not mistaken, that's not a recording. It's one of our guests. Oh? Well, he's excellent. A lot of people feel that way. It's Richard Bliss. Yes, I've heard of him. He's a very fine composer. And he's more than that. He's a remarkable man. Everybody's so dressed up around here. You see, Mama, we're not city folk. Oh, well, now speak for yourself, young man. 
I feel very cityfied in my new dress and coat. <laughs> well, gosh, Mom, you're the prettiest lady here, honest. <laughs> Count me in and you have three staunch admirers. Well, thank you. You're all very kind. Well, Richard, someone here I'd like you to meet. Fine. We've been enjoying your music. Thank you, Oliver. Ruth, Timmy, I'd like you to meet one of our favorite yearly visitors. How do you do? Hi. Bet you didn't expect to see me so soon. Don't you remember? We met on the rim today. Well, of course. You're the boy with the collie. I wanted Mrs. Martin and her son to meet you, but it seems it's all been taken care of. Oh, yes, but very informally. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Bliss. Well, thank you. Very pleased to meet you, sir. Honest, I, I didn't know. Timmy, don't tell me that I fooled you. But today, you saw the candy. You're right, I did see it. But in here, you understand? Pleased to meet you, Timmy. I'm going on a mule ride tomorrow. Well, you'll have to keep your wits about you to keep ahead of those mules. Oh, I can handle a mule. You see, Mom and I, we're not... We're not city folks. We're, we're farmers. farmers. <laughs> And we're going to have lots of fun today. See? We're friends already. <laughs> Lassie doesn't seem too happy about it. I'm sorry, girl. But they don't let dogs below the rim. And I told you before we came, you have to stay on a leash. Well, here we go. Careful, Timmy. I will, Mom. Don't you worry, ma'am. Old Buttermilk here has a disposition as sweet as honey. She'll take good care of the boy. Want a little help up, Sonny? No. I can handle a mule. Well, I guess I could use a little help. <laughs> oh. Now, Lassie, you're acting like a spoiled child. Let's watch him go down the trail.
What entire nation's going on? Ain't never seen buttermilk act like this before. Maybe the snow scared her. No, we have these snow flurries quite often. Something else bothering this mule. Guess I'll have to lead you the rest of the way down. But, but... No buts about it. Come on, buttermilk. Folks, shake the kinks out of your legs. Water your horses while I make the fixings for lunch. That mule's fun lurking to you. Les, what are you doing? You and your dog sure caused a peck of trouble. I'm sorry, folks, but it's nothing we can do but turn back. Now see what you've done, Lassie. You've hum, hum, annihilated me. Mr. Bliss. Hi, it's me, Timmy. And your collie? Yeah, Lassie's here. I detect an unhappy note. Why don't you tell me about it? Well, it's Lassie. She's ruined my whole trip. Oh, yes, your mother told me about the mule train and your very serious problem. Lassie's always been my best friend. <coughs> Till now. Good friends like precious jewels are hard to find. One doesn't just cast them aside. I have a feeling you're the type of boy that wouldn't let a little teasing stand between you and a friend. I don't know. But she made me look plain stupid. You sleep on it tonight. Tomorrow, you can do an old man a favor. I have something I want to show you. did it. A river? Millions of years ago, a little stream started cutting through limestone. It's still cutting. But the colors, Timmy, have you ever seen such color? It's just like a rainbow. There's red, orange, brown, and even purple. All colors. And this time of day, a blue haze lies over the canyon. How did you know? It's all been described to me. What's it like, living in the... Living in the dark all the time? It's a darkness that I can feel. Come. Put your hands on this tree. Now close your eyes and feel. It's sort of spooky. At first. But when you touch the bark, can't you feel the tree come to life? Hey, yeah. And it looks different than it ever did before. Sight is important, but there are other desirable senses, too. Like the sense of touch. You know, being with you makes what happened this morning not so important anymore. Now, let's see. There's the sense of smell, the sense of sight, and the sense of sound. And let's not forget the sense of humor. Oh. oh, 
<laughs> now, if you'll go gather some flowers, I'll give you a lesson on the sense of smell. Okay. I'll be right back. up and touch my hands. My fingers will give you strength. Now just close your eyes. Try to feel the darkness. You must promise me that you will not open your eyes and look down. Uh, I'll try. Lassie. I know there's a path. Go get Timmy. You can do it. firmly toward the wall. Take me up, Lassie. Take me up, girl. Easy, Timmy. Everything's all right. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> if it hadn't have been for you and Lassie, I'd be just like that man you and Mom talked about. Lost total. Total lost Watkins, you mean? <laughs> There's one difference. You're not wearing rubber boots. <laughs> you know something? Tomorrow I'll show you how we can stand on the rim of the Grand Canyon and spit a mile. <laughs> 